So I'm over at LinkedIn.com again, and if you have an account, you can log in, but I'm going to highly recommend for everyone to create a new one, like me, and later I can show you to delete it. Uh, so first name, last name, email, password. The thing about the email, if you're already using an email for an existing account, it won't let you use the existing one again, but you can put anything fake there as well. The, the thing is though, um, it asks you for your email to verify that you're a re regular person on one aspect, um, and then also perhaps to, to connect with your connections, because again, this is a network to, to be social, to connect with people that, are, that might be valuable to you on a business purpose. So I'm going to put my name, and on this screen here, this is not the place where you choose to have that cool, short LinkedIn name. That's on a separate screen. Whatever you put here, it is still going to give you a weird, <coughs> long LinkedIn name until we set it properly a little later. And this can be changed. Anything that we can create can be changed. I'm going to put in a fake email address here, victor at victorvictor.com. That does not exist. I'm just going to put whatever so I can so I can log in. The password, six or more characters. So any password there should work. Six or more characters. And then there's the user agreement. By clicking join now, you agree to the LinkedIn user agreement the privacy policy and the cookie policy. So if you don't agree with any of those, you can't really use the network, but they're all like this nowadays. You, no one really reads these things, and unfortunately they can be pretty complex, but we all agree to them, and really the state of privacy and such online is not so good with these companies really overstepping their boundaries sometimes, but really if you want to play the game, you've got to pay to play. And that's reading the and agreeing to these agreements. I'm going to click join now. So you'll get a screen. Let's start with your profile, country, and zip code. It was pretty smart to <clears throat> select my country and zip code. Um, this one is the local zip code, but let's say I'm, I actually want it more for my zip code down where I actually live. So you can change that. Are you a student? Yes or, yes or no. If you're a student, you're going to have various other aspects to fill in. Probably you're not, so I'm going to say like no. There's job title and company. Both of them are required. So let's say I'm writing title here, police officer. It's going to suggest, as you start typing, jobs within LinkedIn that do exist. Uh, the benefit of that is that that could help you also be found by these common keywords. Uh, here it's saying, well, do you mean policy officer, police officer, senior policy advisor? You're not bound to choose one of these titles. For example, I'm going to see what does it say about social media. There's social media manager, intern, consultant, specialist. Those are some suggestions. Any of those could work. Or I could do social media guru. That is not one of the ones that is in there, but it will let me do it. I can put anything I want there, just like I put director of technology in PMD Interactive. Um, so it's up to you to decide what you want to write there, either one that does exist or make up your own. Either way is fine. Ones that already exist could help you get found a little easier. Or you could be a needle in a haystack, yet another social media manager. But there aren't that many social media ninjas. <laughs> but you might not ever get found that way either. <laughs> <laughs> and I have seen that as that name, some, some of the more modern tech startups give themselves these weird names. So I'm just going to choose social media manager. That's someone that manages social media. Company, same thing here. If a company exists, Nike, you can choose the existent company because then you will be connected with the other people that have also connected to that company. But let's say my company is Nike doesn't exist and I can choose it and later I can create that 
that company page. This will not create your company page at this moment. It's another step a little bit later. Title company industry. Um, I believe everyone will get industry here if you if you don't you can add it later um, but it mine appeared until after I added a company but I got industry and there's lots to choose from it might be a little overwhelming but try to select as close to possible the industry that you're working in you can change it later if you choose the wrong one but this is again just hopefully the right one to help you connect with others that are also on that business so I'm going to go look at, um, is there social media? Let's see, S, security, sporting, staffing, there's no social media. Okay, what about web stuff? Warehouse, wholesale, okay, there's no web. Um, I could say that it is um, perhaps online over media. here. What's that? Online media. Online media? Is there online media? That could be one. Online publishing. Mm. Possibly, although it makes me think a little bit more that it's someone that's doing ebooks and such. But this could work. I was looking also at I, Internet, there's information technology and services, information services. So hopefully you're finding the one that fits to you as best as possible. <laughs> I'm just going to simply select Internet. I can change this later, of course, and then click Create Your Profile. You'll be asked, what are you most interested in? We'll use this info to personalize your experience. Don't worry, we'll keep it private. So are you using LinkedIn to stay up with the industry, finding a job, keeping in touch with contacts, building a professional network? So LinkedIn will try to guide you to use LinkedIn in the way that you want to get out of it. Maybe you don't know just yet at the moment. I'm going to select that one. I don't know just yet. Maybe I don't know exactly what I'll get if I choose these. That's okay. You'll still be able to do any of these things if you choose one of them. But I'm just going to do the I'm open. I'm going to keep my possibilities as open as possible. Thank you. Every career needs a strong network. Build yours by looking for your email contacts. So if you choose to add an email here, it will check your address book and it will tell you, these people in your address book are already on LinkedIn. Would you like to connect? That's up to you to do that or not, but most likely you don't want to do it this way because it will then reach out to everyone in your, possibly everyone in your address book, even grandma, that is not going to be that useful for you on LinkedIn, unfortunately. So I'm going to choose to skip this, and at another screen, we can look at importing an address book if we want. We can always get back to it. I'm going to skip. I have a question. Yes. I want to try to create in that thing, you know, then automatically take directly to my Google account. I'm trying to make a fake account with a Gmail. I'm now going to Gmail account. What should I do? Go back? I shouldn't have, shouldn't have done that. Yeah, let's see. I shouldn't have done that. Email account. Go ahead and close that window. Okay. Go back. Yeah, I'm, no, no, you're on the right screen. Uh, I'm on that screen also. Just click skip. Skip. And then click skip again. Skip again. Okay. So I, I skipped it. I'm not going to put my Gmail. I'm not going to put my Yahoo. I'm going to skip it. But then it says LinkedIn works best when you're connected to more people. Are you sure you want to skip? Yes, I'm going to skip it at this step because I can do a, a more fine-tuned way to connect later. This one is just going to check all your contacts, try to recommend you, and that might be too much. So I'm going to skip that. So here then it might say, okay, let's verify you that you're a real person so you can get all the features. Whoops, I made a fake address here. Here's the trick. On the address bar, just go to LinkedIn.com again. We're going to skip this verification step. Just go to the address LinkedIn.com, press Enter, and it'll let you get in. 
if you do have a real address of your email that you are using here, you might as well verify it. But probably most of us are doing it here fake. We're just trying to learn this concept. I made up a completely fake email address. That's not even going to get verified. So I just skip it by going back to LinkedIn.com. There's many screens to look at here. It has many uh, features, like any social network. But you're going to use LinkedIn to always think about it in terms of what's in it for me. How can I make more connections? How can I get potential jobs? How can I do this? How can I do that? So always think about it in those terms. But we'll take... Um, but we'll take... Uh, a moment to kind of look at the anatomy overall before we start to fill in our account and everything let me do an overview of the different pieces of LinkedIn you should always be able to get back to the to this home screen of LinkedIn with the whole with the logo of LinkedIn um, this is an obvious thing here but it, it can become white noise at a certain point that we don't notice it people ask me about this well how do I find this how do I find that it's right here search and the cool thing about search up here is that you can target a search with these three lines, these options. Search for jobs, search for companies, search for posts. So you can do a generic search for everything or only search for certain people, jobs, etc. It's a very powerful search. It's got 400 million users. We'll look at that later. But search is up here. We can do advanced searches when the basic search is not working. Messaging is new and improved. Conversations on LinkedIn just got easier. So there's also a way to make connections. I'm going to close that. If you hover over, I haven't clicked yet, but if you hover over, that's one of the odd things about LinkedIn I've noticed. These icons here, usually you're going to hover over them. If you click them, it jumps to another screen. If you hover over them, it then tells you info. We do click on them, but as a quick view, you hover. I've got a message so far from someone named Andrew Stark. They're a representative of LinkedIn, and I've got a message here from them. Is your content being read? So that's an article that I could read. I'll get to it later. But I can get messaged directly by people. And usually, you're going to get messaged by people that you have a connection with. Sometimes, sometimes you get a message from someone you don't have a connection with in, in real life or on LinkedIn if they've got the premium one because LinkedIn is trying to keep you connected with those that would benefit you and that you know for real not just any spammer you have to pay to get access to message anyone we won't be paying for that because we'll be focusing on the free aspects notifications will pop up to tell you you've uh, You've, uh, there's a new article for you to read. Uh, here's a suggestion for something. Someone liked your post, etc. Notification, just like every network. And then you're going to see about your network who is trying to connect with you. Someone sent you a request. You can see them quickly here. Click, appro uh, click approve or ignore. And it's going to keep telling you, well, why not connect your Hotmail to connect with people that you might might be valuable to you. And then finally on the top right, eventually when we set this up completely, this will have a picture of yourself. Right now it's generic. There's the sign out button. We've got a basic account. We can try premium. We can look at job postings. We can create job <coughs> postings. So if I'm trying to get, I'm tr if I'm trying to hire people for my business, I could create a posting here. Uh, there is the free version and the paid version. Guess what? The paid version get, gets you more results. But the free version still is useful. Change your language, change your privacy and settings, and get help. So that bar is always visible at the top. There's another bar at the top. Home, which is just like the button up here. If you hover over any of these, you often get drop-downs. Profile. You're going to look at editing the profile and doing updates and who views your profile and such. Network is who you've made connections with. And there's a, you can change it, but the, 
default LinkedIn. I don't quite like it with your connections. It's going to show you everyone that's, that you've connected with, that you've chosen to connect with, as well as those that you've had a conversation with, that not necessarily you're connected, but you replied to one of their posts. So I think that's sort of like uh, too much information. You can edit it to only show you the ones that you've connected with, but by default it will show you everyone that you've had a conversation with. That's interesting. Mine's a little different. I just created the thing as a mine's a little different, you know. Mm -hmm. Even when it's new, it might be a little bit different, unfortunately. So if there's any big differences, uh, I'll try to address them. But if you don't see the same things or they're slightly different, well, that's okay. Perhaps on what you've already filled into it and clicked and selected, it's going to show you slightly different things. Oh, okay. uh, people you may know, so again, as you fill in the profile and all your details and such, and it says, oh, you're in San Diego too, so are these people. So that might suggest to you who to connect with. And then alumni from your various educational institutes. Jobs, if you're looking or posting jobs and interests. So over here is where we've got companies, groups, posts, etc. Slide share, all of these cool new features that if you haven't used LinkedIn recently, you're going to find new and useful. We'll get to those, but here's the place, if you want to jump ahead, here's the place where I would create a company account. We'll do that later. Business services, post a job, talent solutions, advertise, and there's free and paid versions of these. And then, of course, try premium for free for like a week or 30 days or something. You're going to see you have more access, more features, but then you're going to need to pay, I don't know, $30 a year, $50 a year. I don't know the price. I've never done it myself. I've just read about it and such. I uh, think there is a value to it, but usually in my classes I teach the free stuff um, as much as possible. This home screen that I'm seeing is like your home screen of Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus. This is where you see. This is this is where you see what you have posted, what you have shared, and what others have shared, because it is like a classic social network in that I'm getting these updates and such. Pepperdine University shared this, and it's sponsored, so they paid for me to see this. And then I've got stories you can't miss. The real reason qualified people don't get hired. Hey, that's interesting. I haven't been hired recently. Maybe I'll read that. What my interview with Spike Lee taught me about controlling a room. I need to get a little bit more confident in speaking. I might read that. So you're going to see updates from those that you've connected with. Hopefully they're interesting things to read. And you're also you can also get updates from companies and thought leaders and... Uh, personalities and such about articles that might be useful to you, which then you can click to read, you can like, you can comment, you can further share, like a regular social network. Ideally, and then eventually, I want that. I want to post an article, I want to make a post that is valuable to my connection so that they like it, comment, or better yet, share it, so that it reaches more people, and that I reach that interesting connection that I really want to link with. For example, if you want to start up a something business, you want to reach out to a number of people, you know, it's more than your friends and everything. How you, you said, do not, you know, you recommend yes. it to do not, you know, reach out something you know, beneficial, but if you're doing some business, you want to reach out to people, what are you going to be including everybody? <laughs> as a business, as a company, yes, there is a value to reaching out to people that you don't know, definitely. Those are your new customers. Mm -hmm. As you as a regular person, though, that's when you want to be more discerning. That's when you want to really connect with those that are going to be valuable to you. But as a business, yes, there is a value to reach out to those that you don't know to try to make a connection. So before I start to try to get famous on LinkedIn or, or get connections and so forth, I want to uh, go in and edit my profile. If you take my other classes, I always address that too. What do you do first on Facebook or Twitter or whatever? Try to get followers or post. If you post, 
something, you don't have an audience, so you're kind of talking to yourself. But it still is valuable to post content so that eventually when you try to get followers, they go to your profile and see, that's interesting, that's interesting, let me follow. If they don't see anything, there's nothing for, you to, for them to follow about. So yes, we do want to post content to no one first, and then get followers. But before that also, before that step of posting stuff, we need to fully set up a profile. I'm not going to entice people to follow an anonymous guy. I'm going to entice people to follow me with a very cool headshot, a photo of myself. So that means we should edit our profile before we start to post, before we try to get connections. Hover over profile, link at the top, and then click edit profile. Let's go to profile, edit profile. There's going to be this gauge here. I'm a beginner. I haven't filled in very much. I want to get it to the very top. I don't remember what it's called. Be an expert. You want to fill in your profile as much as possible. So I'll mention things here and there. Um, there's a pop-up that happened here. Actually, I'm going to read this. It's easier to edit your profile. Stay ready for new opportunities. Simply click on the text you want to edit. So if actually I want to be known by a different name, you can change that. But that's one recommendation. Let me see what the next one is. Down over here. Share more about who you are. Add new sections to round out your profile and get more views. That's the first step to getting found for a new project or your next career step. We're going to see all of these different sections for a profile education. There's a bunch of them. We should fill in as many of them as we can, and we'll look at them in a moment. What else? See how you look to others. Check out what other people see when they view your profile, so you can make sure you're always looking your best. Right now we're looking at this profile as myself, as the manager. So it's going to look different than someone searching me and finding me on Google or Bing. I can switch to see how my profile looks to non-members, or non-connections or your other connections. Next, manage privacy where right where you edit. Keep your connections in the loop about what's new in your professional life and gives them even more reason to reach out. Whenever you make any changes, you added a new experience or a new job or whatever, it'll automatically get shared to your home screen and therefore your followers, your connections would see that. If you don't want that, you can turn that off. Maybe as a beginner, I don't want everyone to start to see I change this and I change that and I change this and I change that. It's like a flood of activity. So as a beginner, I'm going to say, no, don't share everything I do yet. After I get it set up and start to use it to build an audience, build connections, that's when I might turn that on because then that stands up. That's going to be useful later. If I add a new skill, um, uh, YouTube video editor, that's going to be then shared, and my connections would see it. My 80-something connections would see it. They would see it, but then they could click vouch. They could click, yes, he does have YouTube editing experience. And that's how you create a resume with skills that people believe you can do because your followers will say he knows how to do that yes or he doesn't know how to do that he's inflating his resume click no uh, in a sense you to uh, LinkedIn helps you um, be honest with your resume because your connections are gonna see it and they're gonna say yes or no they know about that before we go further there's a lot to do Let's look at this. This is always the big secret people want to know. It's kind of hidden. My current LinkedIn address is linkedin.com slash in victor dash compost dash gibberish. I don't want that hard name. I want simply Victor Campos. The secret to change that, hover over it, and you'll get a little gear. It's always been there. Maybe you always wanted that short name, but it's hidden. You don't see it until you hover over it. Click that gear. Your public profile URL. Enhance your personal brand by creating a custom address. 
Hopefully, the short name that you want is not taken. Sorry, there's already Victor Campos taken. You'll have to be Victor G. Campos. So take a moment to click Create Your Custom URL, and now you're going to have a short name, if it's not already taken, 5 to 30 characters, letters, and numbers. No spaces or symbols or special characters. You won't know if it's taken until you click Save. It'll take, it's taken. It'll give you a suggestion. Apparently, Campos Victor can be taken. I'm not going to choose any one of these because it's a fake account. Remember, if you're doing this fake account, you have to decide, do you really want to do this because you're about to take the name away from your other account that you want to keep? So maybe don't do this if it's your fake account, but now you know where to change it on your real account. If this is your brand new account that you will use for real, you might as well claim your name. If you claimed it now, and then you delete this account, does it become available again? I believe so, but to be the most sure, I would go in and put something else I there, too, and, I just wondered. and then save that, and that should free it up, and then delete the account, and then you can claim the name for real. Apparently, there is a Luke Skywalker on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's really good. And Darth Vader. <laughs> All right. Darth Vader has a LinkedIn profile. Self-employed. <laughs> <laughs> Experience, Lord of the Sith, self as well. Apparently Clark Kent also has one, Bruce Wayne, Han Solo, other fictional characters like Barack Obama, <laughs> Tony Stark, Chewy Chewbacca. <laughs> okay, so people can use LinkedIn for fun as well. Zero connections. Not even Grand Moff Tarkin. Okay, so um, I'm not going to choose any name at the moment. You could if you want to, um, but that's where you claim your name. I'm going to go back to Profile, Edit Profile. As you are new to this, it's going to start to pop up and suggest to you a bunch of things here, which you should, which you, which you should fill in as much as possible. I'm going to ignore them for the moment, but whatever it's asking you here, if you ignore it or close it, you can still fill it in down here. But I'm going to ignore those for the moment because those take a, a few more steps. I'm, I want to look at this first over here. Uh, add profile, photo, and such. You want to put a profile, a professional one, not another you know, duck-faced selfie. Here, save that for Facebook. You want to put here something that looks nice, that looks professional. You can put your good shirt on at the moment. And then good lighting, too. You don't want a, a photo that's very dark and there's a lot of shadows and make you look weird. You want to take a photo. You could easily take your photo with your phone like this, of course, but be careful, of course, that you look professional with it and you've got good lighting. But even the... everything here is helping you get connections. Even the photo, so you want a professional-looking connection. Uh, a photo. You want a photo that is appropriate to your business. If my business is CPA, I don't want to show up with a photo there in my Hawaiian t-shirt. Uh, unless my CPA business is in Hawaii and we expect to be in Hawaiian t-shirts, I guess. But you want to have the as professional for the job kind of photo as possible. Notice all of this is further editable. If you hover over, change your name, change your job title, change your location. We've got experience and education.
So for example, ed experience and education is just going to jump you down to the experience section. You can reposition these sections. I'm going to skip these sections at the moment. I'm going to look at what it's suggesting to me so far at the moment. Experience, I can add as much experience. So usually these are positions, you know, jobs and such. You've got company name and title required, location optional, time period required, description optional. See examples. So again, if the company exists, it'll pop up there. If it doesn't, you can still put any company. And if you've got your own personal company, it might be better to go into the route of creating a company first and then adding it to your profile. Because here, if I'm trying to search, if I'm trying to add my company, it doesn't exist, and therefore it won't link it. But we can always edit this later. Yes. Is it better to when you're doing your um, custom URL to use your business name or your personal name? On this custom URL, you should be doing your personal one, because right now we're dealing with the personal account. But you have to decide. Are you going to have a persona on LinkedIn as yourself? Maybe I'm part of a company where it doesn't matter, or I shouldn't use my name attached to it. You know, um, as PMD Interactive, I get business from me. You know, Victor Campos gets business to PMD Interactive. But maybe PMD Interactive does not want the people in the company to get business for the company. They want it always to come through PMD Interactive. So then, in my case, I would decide really not to use this personal one at all, really. I'm going to go up to companies and manage a company that way. But maybe I'm part of an affiliate marketing group. And yes, I have to advertise myself for the benefit of the parent company, so I'm still going to use my name. In the name, I could put John Smith dash Mary Kay. You know, I could be that way. I still wouldn't recommend it because you might not be with that company forever. I would still claim your name and everything that you're going to be posting about in your personal. You're still going to be advertising and promoting the parent company. So let's say here, PMD Interactive. So that company does exist. We created it, so it shows up here. What about if I'm PMD Internet Services? It doesn't show up yet. I can add a new company. But that's unfortunately not how I would do it. It would be another route. This is why I would get back to this. I would first go to Interest Companies and over here create a company. I'm not going to get to it just yet because it's a few steps but I would first go to interest companies, create the company, and then when I'm doing my personal profile, then my personal company will show up here as one of the pop-ups. Like this, Victor's Designs wasn't a real company, and so it, it didn't, it didn't auto-populate. Let's see, I'm doing VMC Internet Solutions. My title there, again, if it's a real title, CEO, why not? I'm the CEO of my own company. Or Senior Software Engineer. Location. It's optional, but it could be useful to you. So, San Diego, greater San Diego area. Sure. It's going to then, um, hopefully your content then will appear to people in that area if you, if you need that. Let's see how specific you can be. Notice Chula Vista is not appearing because it's just part of the whole San Diego greater area. You could put that in if you want. How long have you been at that position? Let's say January 2010. 
to current, present. It might suggest, okay, because it's chronological. If this is your most latest job, would you like that to be added as your main tagline over here? I had put in social media manager at Victor's Designs, and it's suggesting if this is your latest position, why not update it to that? I could say, no, don't update it, or yes, update it. Description. Now here you have some space for you to write what you've done for that company, like a resume. So it's a great idea to look at the examples. Position descriptions should provide some detail of the position so users viewing your profile can get a quick idea of what the position involves. Some examples. So you can write brand development, website traffic growth, website UI, and advertising revenue. Develop brand strategy and statistic systems. So literally, this is what you would be writing in a resume. If you haven't written a resume recently, this is a great example of that. Instruction on workstation setup for prevention of eye strain, repetitive strain injuries, and back pain. Give on-site, off-site classes. Comprehensive database management and migration from SQL. Notice the tense of these. They are active tense especially for those that are in active position. You're still involved in them. What are you doing right now? Uh, you want the terms that are active, like I'm doing this now. And you could write this, I taught special needs students at this school. That's fine. Some of this is a little bit more higher level kind of language in that it is a bit more theoretical. And advising new businesses on formation of corporations and business structures, drafting privacy policies, and structuring commercial transactions. So what you write here could be one of the difficult things that you write, like a resume, where you have to figure out what's the best way to write, I threw the trash out every Friday. You know, uh, on-site custodial maintenance on a weekly basis. That's better than writing. I wrote, I threw the trash out every Friday. But it's still true, isn't it? This is an art and a science. And you don't want to go off so off left field that it makes you sound like you were the CEO of the custodial department. <laughs> you know, careful about that. So let's see here. Uh, senior software engineer. Uh, planned or planning and developing software applications for deployment on various mobile platforms or to be even more specific on iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. So as specific as you want to be, obviously as honest as you need to be, as much as you want to write there. And this can always be editable later. I'm going to click Save on that. Oops, I forgot one thing actually. As we were editing it at the very end, did you also, did you also notice you've got that info? Um, once you once you, oh, okay, I see it comes afterward. You add a position, you click Save, and after you've saved the position, then it says Add Media. You can attach various things that vouch for those skills. Document, photo, link, video, presentation. If I'm mentioning here software applications, why not add a link to the app that you can download? So I'm adding a link to my software engineer or my social media or whatever. I'm attaching a link. Supported providers. If you, if you have content, if you have media on one of these providers over here, it will make your link the most useful. <clears throat> Just because, um, have you visited, uh, have you seen some social networks where instead of it having a link to a picture, 
or a link to a YouTube video, the video is right on the tweet or right on the post. Those are embedded, embedded content. This is saying that if you're posting a link to one of the things that they support, which seems to be very extensive, then it will automatically show up there without the person having to leave LinkedIn. If you have a picture that you've got on Flickr, it'll show it automatically there instead of jumping out to it. If you've got something over on Storify or Formspring, it's pretty, pretty detailed. Code Pen. So let's say I've got my. Oh, this one's this one's cool. This is a pretty new one. Blab. They've barely been open for like three or four months. Blab is a video four-person video shows. So let's say you you have you have here one of your one of your tasks that you did was hosted weekly video chat show on industry topics and I have a link to the blab account where I did that it'll apply directly it'll be an active link with its own little icon and everything So I've attached some media to vouch for my experiences in a particular position, and I can attach as many as I want. Be careful, though, if you put too many, it looks like too much content, and people just zone out if there's so much stuff. So I can't exactly say, put three things, put seven things, don't put more than 20 things. But maybe don't put more than 20 things. But you want to put in relevant things. What about that white paper that you wrote for your company? What about the, the photo gallery of, of products that you handcraft in your handcrafted jewelry store? What about that presentation that you created that went over really well in the company? You can attach it there. So this is the virtual resume. This is Resumes 2.0. On that paper resume, you're going to sound really nice. You're going to look really nice on paper, but here, you're going to be much more impressive to actually show what you've done. You're showing, not just telling. Showing and telling. Um, and you should already know this, but if you don't, I'm going to shock you to tell you that many times recruiters now are looking you up online. Even people that are not recruiting you, but, but want that you're already hired or such, and they want to look you up. What is, what is this person doing online? Oh, that seems very embarrassing for our company. Perhaps we won't hire them. So that's happening more and more, and there needs to be eventually some definition about that because personal life is personal life. But companies are definitely abusing this to look you up online, and if you don't align with the values of the company, perhaps you might not have a job. So anything you put online, you should be aware of that, that it will probably outlive you. You know, you try to delete some that embarrassing picture from your account, but one of your friends copied it, and now it's on their account and then they copied it, and then it shows up on Bing, and it shows up on the recruiter's computer. So whatever you're putting online should be the best possible for you to help you, whatever is embarrassing. There's often a way in these networks to make your accounts private, especially for business. <clears throat> or use pseudonyms. So this is what we should do first before trying to build an audience, fill in our profile as much as possible. There's even a new little bit of branding that we can do at the very top here, a background picture that will fill up this amount of space, maybe a great photo, something inspirational. Notice it tells you if you are going to use a photo, it should be 1,400 pixels wide or 425. So if I take a great photo of a sunset, I could put it up there, but it's got to be less than 8 megabytes whatever makes sense. If you are the face of your company, if I'm this web design company, technology company, and I'm putting myself out there like this, I, I should put a photo of something technology related. 
maybe the you know the photo of a, a photo of a close up of a keyboard or a, a circuit board or maybe a, a chart showing our revenue increasing or something to further brand the profile and then of course a photo a professional photo which then you can set up round square or whatever but you want to you are going to be a book judged by its cover, and here's your cover, your profile. When it suggests you at the top, why, why not do this, why not do that, you should. If it asks you, why don't you put in your charity work, if you have any? Why not put in any books you've written, any articles you've, you've authored? There's all of these sections to fill in. You should fill in as many of these as you can. I'm not going to go through them all because it doesn't apply to everyone. But add your education. Uh, another summary. What are skills that you have? Volunteering experience. Languages that you know. And you can define how much you know. Beginning, intermediate, advanced, native language speaking skills. What organizations are you in? What test scores do you have? If that's relevant to what you're trying to do. What sort of honors or awards? Courses you've taken, or I suppose taught. Do you have any patents? What are projects you're working on? Or certifications? Or interests? So fill in as much of this as you can at your leisure. But this is how you build your resume, how you build an, a, a profile, so that then after our next break, we're going to then talk about what are the aspects that LinkedIn provides us to make connections, to make valuable connections, to reach people that would help us via LinkedIn. Any questions so far? Let's, uh, let's take a break, our second break, and when we go on, it's about 11.40, when we go on, we will look at more aspects of LinkedIn, the publishing platform aspect of LinkedIn.